Hey, True Believers England team here, and yes, I did tell you that the Spirit Awards were going to be different this time. We're going to be doing them in sections, talking about the best comics, I say of all time, but really it's from the creation of the Marvel Universe all the way up till now. And in this case, you're going to vote for the best comic books and TV shows and everything like that of the 1980s and 1990s. So, without further ado, let's get this party started. Here are the nominees for the best comic book artists of the 1980s. First up, we have John Byrne, who drew the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, and of course his revitalization of the Man of Steel himself, Superman. Next up, we got to talk about Frank Miller with his work on Batman The Dark Knight Returns. He did Ronin as well as some Daredevil. George Perez was all over the 1980s. Highlights, of course, the new Teen Titans. And, of course, the crisis on Infinite Earths. That should be enough. Our fourth nominee is Art Adams, the man-owned mutant hood for a while. Dang, he even created a character named Longshot. Pretty good deal. And the final nominee is Todd McFarlane. Of course, he drew Spider-Man. He was on the Hulk for a while. They even gave him his own Spider-Man comic after a while. Next up, we have the nominees for the best writer of the 1980s. And here's that John Byrne guy again. You remember all those titles I mentioned in the first place? Yeah, he either wrote them or co-plotted them. Now, you want to talk a man who is mutant hood? It is Chris Claremont himself, ladies and gentlemen, the sole writer of the X-Men through the 80s. 1970s nominee gets nominated in the 80s as well for his run on The Question and wrote the best run of Iron Man of all time, in my opinion. And we then have Marv Wolfman, who co-created and wrote The Crisis on Infinite Earths and The New Teen Titans. And finally, we have Frank Miller, who created Ronan, wrote The Dark Knight Returns, and of course his legendary run on Daredevil. Next up, we have the best Marvel comic of the 1980s. Iron Man had Tony Stark facing his alcoholism. We had the armor wars, and let's not forget, James Rhodes finally wore the armor. The X-Men started the decade with the death of Phoenix. And of course, we had Days of Future Past, and my favorite, The Brood Saga. In the 80s, The Amazing Spider-Man saw the creation of Venom, had Kraven on his last hunt, and we met the kid who collected Spider-Man. Fantastic Four was at its best as well in the 1980s with stories like The Trial of Galactus and the handling of Doctor Doom was just top notch. Next up we have Daredevil and Frank Miller's legendary run including the Electra Saga and even after Frank Miller left it still managed to be a quality title. Next we have the nominees for Best DC Comic of the 1980s. Next up, we have The Batman, with stories like Death in the Family, and I think the highlight would probably be Frank Miller's Year One. The new Teen Titans revitalized the team to make it as big as the X-Men, with stories like The Judas Contract and The Tregan Saga. And John Byrne's run on Superman depowered him, brought forth the supporting cast, and made him a relevant character all over again. The Legion of Superheroes started the decade with the Great Darkness Saga, and then, of course, they started their Baxter series as well as blew up the moon in their future saga. And the final nominee, Batman and the Outsiders, bringing us new characters like Karma and Halo and quickly becoming a fan favorite. Next, we have the best independent comic book of the 1980s. Starting with Ben Endland's The Tick. Yes, only 12 issues had ever come out during the 1980s, but still, they were really good issues. Gru the Wanderer proved to be the perfect parody of Conan the Barbarian. Judge Dredd came all the way over from England to show us who exactly was the law. Then we have the much more serious and Daredevil parodying Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original run. And the final nominee is a take on Captain Marvel, no less, in the form of Miracle Man. Next up, we have the Spirit Award nominees for the best new character of the 1980s. The She-Hulk, a Fantastic Four member, a member of the Avengers. She started off savage, but dude, she ended the decade sensational. Elektra, who you can literally take her chapters out of Daredevil and create one whole story. I know, because they did it, and I've got the trade paperback on my shelf. Badass assassin Deathstroke the Terminator, and yes, we're going to call him Deathstroke the Terminator. Thank you very much. 
Starting off as a villain, we have Rogue, who quickly became one of the most famous and favorited members of the X-Men. And yes, I know the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles aren't a single character, but you know what? Don't overthink this. Just have fun with it. Here we go. Next up, we have the nominees for the best miniseries of the 1980s. Starting with The Man of Steel, which made Superman a little bit less powerful, but a lot more human. And I think that made him a better character. Green Arrow Longbow Hunters won the few stories of the 80s whose effects are still being felt with the character today. Batman The Dark Knight Returns, written by Frank Miller, once again revitalizing the character by returning him to his darker roots. The Watchmen, using Charlton Comics avatars, deconstructs the entire superhero genre of comic book. Marvel's Secret Wars. Let's get a whole bunch of villains and heroes make toys out of them, and you know what? Write a comic book where they're fighting on a battle planet. Next up, we have the nominees for Best Story Arc of the 1980s. Right out of the gate, we started off with the Dark Phoenix Saga from the X-Men, having Phoenix go crazy and the team having to take her out. Frank Miller gave us a more graphic and detailed look at Bruce Wayne's first year as the Batman in Batman Year One. Craven's Last Hunt answers the question, what if the weakest of all of Spider-Man's villains actually defeated Spider-Man? In Iron Man Armor Wars, Tony Stark goes on a hunt for all sorts of armor tech villains to get his designs back. Daredevil, born again. What if the Kingpin knew Matt Murdock's secret? And what would he do with it? That's what's answered in this miniseries. Next up, we have the nominees for the best one-shot of the 1980s. In Amazing Spider-Man number 248, Peter Parker meets his biggest fan in the story, The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man. In The Killing Joke, the Joker wants to prove to Batman that all it takes is one bad day to have a man go totally insane. In Arkham Asylum, A Serious House, we get the entire story of the creation of Arkham Asylum and what it does to the villains inside. X-Men God Loves Man Kills. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, that's brought forth as the X-Men stand in for racial equality. Daredevil in Love and War has the Kingpin seeking the help of Daredevil to rescue his kidnapped wife, Vanessa. Next, we have the nominees for Best Live Action Comic Book TV Show of All Time. Daredevil from Netflix, The Doom Patrol, Smallville, The Boys, and Batman 66. Alrighty, gang, switching to the 1990s. Here are the nominees for Best Artist of the 1990s. First up, we have Jim Lee, who gave us such great titles as The X-Men and other titles like Wildcats. 1970s, 1980s, now he's nominated for the 1990s with his work on the Infinity Gauntlet, The Avengers, ladies and gentlemen, George Perez. Next up, we have J. Scott Campbell. Working on Fantastic Four, and of course, we can't forget that run on Gen 13. After Spider-Man, Todd McFarlane went to Image and uh, worked on his own character, Spawn. Alex Ross in the 90s had Astro City. Of course, we can't forget Marvels, and to follow that up, he went to DC to help with Kingdom Come. Next up, we have the nominees for Best Writer of the 1990s. Starting off with Frank Miller who gave us Sin City and then said, hey, you know what? I want to warp history. Let's do the 300. Kurt Busaic gave us the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the Avengers, not to mention Marvels, and of course his creation, Astro City. Mike Magnolia for his writing on Hellboy, and yes, there are a lot of miniseries, so pick one, Seat of Destruction. Wasn't that the first of them? Grant Morrison, who did an excellent run on JLA, man, seriously. It was batch, and also The Invisibles. Chuck Dixon basically owned the Batman in the 90s, what with creating Bane. He did Nightfall and gave Robin a, a, his own series. Next up, we're going to see the nominees for the best Marvel comic of the 1990s. Daredevil had always been a quality title in the 90s. We got The Fall of the Kingpin and Last Rites, and then The Fall of Daredevil himself in Fall from Grace. Captain America, who in Streets of Poison realized, yes, all he is is straight out of a bottle. Great job in Acts of Vengeance. And of course, Cap Wolf. The Uncanny X-Men, and yes, mutants still ruled in the 90s. 
with a lot of Wolverine, by the way. They even ripped his adamantanium out of him. X-Factor had an excellent run by Peter David. One of, issue, of course, we all look at where they have to face a psychiatrist, nonetheless. The adjectiveless X-Men. Dude, is this still the number one selling comic book of all time, the first issue of that? Oh, look, they got married. Next up, we have the nominees for Best DC Comic of the 1990s. Detective Comics, and that had always been my favorite of the Batman titles for a while. Of course, we have chapters of Nightfall and, of course, No Man's Land. Mark Wade's run on Flash was awesome. Impulse, we had uh, the Quick and the Dead storyline. We learned about the Speed Force so much in the 1990s. Green Lantern was humanized in his own title, of course, before they took it away, gave it to Kyle Rayner. But still, that was pretty hot as well. This book really kicked ass. Speaking of kicking ass, you have Vertigo titles. And in this case, we have Hellblazer, John Constantine making a run. Ask him for your votes. The Power of Shazam managed to update Captain Marvel for a modern audience as well as keep that Golden Age feel of the comic book. Next up, we have the nominees for the best independent comic book of the 1990s. This should be good. Starting off with The Next Men, John Byrne's kind of X-Men-ish thing that actually introduced Hellboy to the world. Valiant Comics' violent rye update was Bloodshot. And yes, in the 90s, a man with a lot of nanites still needed a big-ass gun. And of all of the creations of the Image founders, Spawn seemed to be the immediate favorite, and of course the favorite nowadays too. And then we have Frank Miller's noirish set of graphic novels, Sin City. And then we have Jeff Smith's Bone, which starts off cartoon and fun, and then becomes an epic fantasy in the style of Lord of the Rings. Next up, we have the nominees for Best New Character of the 1990s. Mike Magnolia's Hellboy. The X-Men's Gambit. From cartoons to comic books, we have Harley Quinn. From the mind of Todd McFarlane, we have Spawn. Finally, we have Marvel's Deathstroke the Terminator ripoff, Deadpool. Next up, we have the nominees for Best Miniseries of the 1990s. Kingdom Come, which asks the question, how far can superheroes go before they become the villains themselves? Marvels takes a look at the Marvel Universe from the Golden Age to the Silver Age through the eyes of a news photographer. Hellboy, Seed of Destruction. You know, I've looked for a TV guide version of how to describe this story. It's way too complex. Check it out. From Hell has Alan Moore's take on the tale of Jack the Ripper. And then we have Batman the Long Halloween, another noirish tale. This one taking the course of an entire year. Next up, we have the nominees for Best Story Arc of the 1990s. Batman No Man's Land, Gotham's been destroyed by an earthquake, divided by gangs, and all Batman wants to do is gain control again. The death of Superman was only the beginning in this story. You had a great funeral and a return that gave us Superboy, Steel, and Cyborg Superman. Keep your Wolverine origins. The only origin I need is Weapon X from Marvel Comics Presents and drawn by Barry Windsor Smith. Seasons of Mist from the Sandman series has Lucifer giving Morpheus the key to hell, and now Morpheus has to figure out what to do with it. And finally, we have Maximum Carnage, which sees Venom and Spider-Man bringing their team of heroes to fight Carnage's team of baddies. Next up, we have the nominees for the best one-shot of the 1990s. We get the origin of Harley Quinn in Batman Adventures' Mad Love. A retelling and updated version of the Captain Marvel origin and power of Shazam. A mild-mannered cafe owner has his violent past brought to light in the history of violence. You only need two words to describe Batman and Dracula Red Rain. Vampire Batman. Frank Miller's 300 gives us an over-the-top telling of the tale of the Spartans. And finally, we have the nominees for the best animated comic book TV show of all time. Starting with Batman, the animated series. The Justice League, and yes, we're including all four seasons. 1994's X-Men animated series. Superman, the animated series. And finally, Batman Beyond. So there you go, guys, the nominees for the best in comics, 1980s, 1990s. In the description below is the list of nominees. All you have to do is cut and paste, 
into the comment section and delete whatever you're not voting for, leaving only your selection. And if you have time to tell me who I forgot while we were saying, hey, like John Burns, awesome for this, and you're like, oh, you forgot, you have time to vote. Trust me, it takes only a minute. I've done it many, many times myself. And we're going to be announcing the winners on Sunday, the 26th of July, if you haven't figured that one out, though. All right, so there you go, gang. Uh, don't forget to click like. Definitely share this out so we can get more voters. And if you do like what we do here, please consider going on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi especially. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on. Helps keep making videos for you. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.